Look, here's the black holocaust I knew it was prophecy A thousand times worse than the Jewish atrocities Uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score Cause in 1619, that's when they declared war We the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches <laughs> All right, first and foremost, we're gonna give call Halal Yahweh by Hashem from Ashiach Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. The name is only begotten Son. We are going to call Jesus Christ. We the Hebrew Israelites out in Sacramento once again. He the priest of downfall of Babylon and the white race, aka the Edomites, and also priest peace and prosperity and salvation to our twelve tribes of Israel. And it's the same message every week. Our people got to repent, and it's not necessarily a. a, a a, a, a day of destruction that I got to look forward to, but it's also a day uh, of resurrection as well. Because there's a positive aspect of walking this walk and keeping laws as well. So that's what we're going to get into. And we're going to get into some judgment as well. So can we bring that up. Psalms 19 and 12. Who can understand his errors? Uh -huh. Cleanse thou from secret faults. Who can understand your errors if you don't know what a sin is? Our people are grow up in the church and they, they have this thing for the Bible every now and then or they don't want to believe in God because certain things happen. They don't have that uh, understanding of God controls everything. But at the same time, when you understand the truth of the Bible, you understand the, the, the only thing that's an error is a sin. Some things aren't necessarily a sin, but you don't have to do. But the main thing is keeping our people in this bodies in captivity in America is they don't know who they are according to the Bible and they sin, they sin at will. They don't know no better. So that's an error they got to learn. Read. Verse 13. Keep back thy servant also from pre pre presumptuous. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Yeah, we're gonna ask most how to keep us back from presumptuous sins. Thinking certain foods are clean and don't have pork in it. You gotta read the ingredients on cereal. You gotta read the ingredients on any type of food that you don't make yourself. Go ahead. Let them not have dominion over me. Yeah, let not presumptuous sins have dominion over you. Don't have a, a, a mindset of thinking everything is all good. You might uh, wear a certain fabric and think it's 100%, but guess what? It might not be 100% unless you check. Go ahead. Then shall I be upright. Then you're going to be upright when we learn how to get rid of the small ears and presumptuous sins. Go ahead. And I shall be innocent from great transgression. Yeah, we're going to be innocent from great transgression because we're not transgressing, we're not sinning. We're walking upright according to the Most High's word. Is that it? Give me uh, Go ahead, give me this. You, you didn't call for Isaiah chapter, chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean. Uh, talking about the individual. Wash you, make you clean. Read. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Uh, continue. 17. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Yeah, that's our job. We got to cleanse ourselves, make ourselves clean, and cease to do evil works. But we're doing evil works ever since we left Egypt, man. And that's why the Most High put it in play to just have him be in the captivity after captivity because he knew he was going to rebel against him. But like I said, we're going to be that small remnant to stand up for the truth until death, like it says in Sirach, as well teach our people accordingly so we can all get out of this predicament. That's our duty, man. Teach our people and tell them what they're doing wrong and how to get back right with the Most High if they truly want to serve the Most High. That's the thing. People don't want to serve the Most High. People want to do their own thing and be uh, right in their own eyes. Look at that devil recording. What are you recording, devil? Right. That black man is separated from you. That's a damn shame. Right. Got an old decrepit devil on your back. That's crazy, man. Read that. 38 and what? 38 and 10. Sirach 38 and 10. Leave off from sin. Leave off from sin, read. And order thine hands aright. Uh -huh. And cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Yeah, cleanse your heart from all wickedness. Cleanse your mind from all wickedness. How you do that? You got to start with the laws of God. Fear in the Most High, first and foremost. Then he'll reveal things to you. Then he'll let you come into the knowledge of the Most High. Excuse me, starting with your heritage and what we're supposed to do to get back right with it before this day of destruction. Is that it? Give me um, Go ahead. One, Psalms chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How can we cleanse our ways after the Bible said we're supposed to cleanse our ways? Go ahead. By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Yeah, according to the word of the Most High. And the word of the Most High starts with the laws of God, man. The, the oracles of God. The, the milk that we're supposed to get. The beginning of our foundation and our walk in this truth. And that's what people got to understand. It's not all about cursing out people. It's not all about, you know, uh, having multiple wives and whatnot. Our people got to learn the truth and start with the milk. And then go on to the filet mignon as we speak. Which is the dark parables and the prophecies, things like that. These deep breakdowns that we got to learn to teach our people the history and things like that. 
But our main objective is to teach them the basics and how to, how to start off with baby steps so they don't overwhelm themselves in this walk. So it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Give me that. First John 1 and 5. This is then, this then is the message which we have heard front of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Yeah, we walk in darkness. We say we follow the most high, we lie. And that's what the Christian church does. They think they're perfect. But at the same time, they profess themselves to be sinners. How can you say, how can you say call yourself saved and you're an active sinner right now? That's madness, man. You're walking in darkness and you and you part of the blind being led by the blind. Read. And do not truth. Uh -huh. But if we walk in the light, Read. as we as he is in the light, uh -huh. we have fellowship one with another. Exactly. We walk in the light as how the most high supposed to have us walk in the light. We have fellowship with one to another. People that are righteous. Give me that in uh, Proverbs. Uh no, no. Give me 6 and 23 first. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment is a lamp. That's the light that we're supposed to walk in. Read. And the law is light. The what? And the law is light. The law is light. That's how we walk in the light. Walk in the law. Read. And the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Being corrected is a way of life. When you were a young child, you got corrected by your parents. So right now, you got to be corrected by the Most High as a nation. Starting with the people that are preaching this word that know from right from wrong according to the Bible. It might be harsh, it might be uh, hard to accept and digest, but at the same time, people that don't want it to be corrected, they're going to be the ones that are be, uh, the two thirds and be destroyed accordingly, man. And you don't want to be part of that number. Read that. But if we walk in the light, oh, it's not good. and the blood of Yahweh Hamashiach, his son cleanses all. Cleanses us from all sin. He said that the, who the world calls Christ, the Mount Shekhi Awashai, cleanses us from all sin because he was a perfect land that was sacrificed for the nation of Israel in order for us to have the remission of sins from our past walk. And now we're supposed to be a new creature in Christ walking as he walked as that example. Go ahead. If we say that no, that we have no sin, uh -huh. we deceive ourselves. Yeah, we can't say we have no sin because we're, we're our carnal flesh. And like I said, there's presumptuous sins. And we don't know that sins until uh, uh, somebody points it out to us per se. Go ahead. And the truth is not in us. Uh -huh. If we confess our sins, we confess our sins. We're supposed to do. That's how you start on the path of righteousness. Read. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Exactly. Most I say he's going to be faithful and just to forgive our sins. But we got to profess it, and he has a. We, he knows we have a contrite spirit, and we want to change. Read. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. If we say that we have not sinned. We make him a liar. We make God a liar because he, he knows we're in our sinful flesh and we're, we're uh, righteous as filthy rags. What's going on, brother? you have a question? You heard of his lights before? Yeah. Oh, for real? Oh, we heard about his lights before. Yeah, we are the Israelites. We're not just black, though. I'm, I, I've been considered from the tribe of Simeon, but as you can see, people next to me, there's Mexicans, you know, so called Mexicans, Salvadoran, things like that. We're all brothers and sisters in this wall. So it's not just about black people alone, because they're still our people as well. We're on the same predicament. We're on the same hoods, doing the same thing. So that's how we teach our people. The 12 tribes of Israel are diverse. If you look at this 12 tribe sign, if you see the sign right here, there's all shades and colors on that sign. So that's what you got to look at. That's the, that's the starting point, per se, and to knowing who you are. What would you say your tribe is on that sign? Judah, your father is an American Negro as well? Okay, how long do you know about this life for? Not long? When did you discover the videos? Okay, all praises, brother. That's that's all good. How, how do you feel about the information? Do you believe you're an Israelite? I have an open mind. You have an open mind? That's what I, I got an open mind. Do, do, I, feel like, I, feel, I feel as though that our our culture has been hidden from it, or it's been Absolutely. stolen, or Give me that basically, I feel like we ain't getting the full truth. Absolutely. That's where it starts. You got to want to seek it out as well. But I'm glad somebody already knew to point you in the right direction, so you don't got to really go through the motions and figure it out. But you still got to learn more and, and grow into it. Because I'm, I'm not sure if he says you, you locked in and you believe it fully, but there's information out there that, that can be proven, along with history, according to the Bible. So do you, do you believe in the Bible? I believe it's 
Okay, well, hey, we're going to bring it out to you. If you have any questions, let me know. Give me that. Oh, give me give me this first. Give me the, Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. Exactly. This is talking about the nation of Israel. So as you, uh, you already said before, our history was hidden. And that's how you know we are the people of the Bible. We're, our heritage has been hidden over the course of time. But they started off, well, we were in West Africa and we got brought into slavery. But what happened in West Africa? What happened before in West Africa? We can get into that. Give me that. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Uh -huh. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies mm -hmm. in the land which thou knowest not. You're going to serve your enemies in a foreign land. Go ahead. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. Hey, the most I said, the Israelites are going to be uh, uh, going through affliction in another nation that you don't know for transgressing his commandments. So we're going to get a couple commandments as well. But first, let me bring this up. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Go ahead. Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Uh -huh. Hold not thy peace. Amen. And be not still, O God. Uh -huh. For lo, thy enemies are made a tomo. Yeah, the enemies of God are murmuring. They're they're basically causing confusion. Read. And they that hate thee. They that hate the Israelites. Go ahead. Have lifted up the head. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They're taking crafty counsel against thy people. People have conjured up plans to uh, uh, basically put us in uh, dire straits and negative connotation, read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Yeah, they consulted against who? Thy hidden ones. Who were the hidden ones in the Bible? The Israelites. So if you know anything about uh, uh, world politics, you know who the Jews are, the so-called Jews in Israel, right? Have you seen pictures of them, photos of them? They look white, correct? But who who's surrounding that area? The so-called Middle East. Brown-skinned people. So how do white people get there? That's right. You mean out of all them brown people, white people just landed in the middle and they're the, and they're the Jews all of a sudden? There has to be some type of history behind it. We can get into it. But keep reading that. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. The enemies of God said they're going to they're gonna try to cut us off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. Every other nation that hates the Israelites made a plan to make sure they, didn't, they forgot who they were. We already read that they're going to serve enemies in a foreign land, and we that's, that's proof that who we are. But we don't get more proof. Go ahead. They are confederate against the, uh -huh. the tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacles of Edom. Have you heard about the Edomites in the Bible yet? He says so you watch videos, but you're fairly new. So according to the Bible, the Edomites will be considered Caucasian people, white people. That's the first name listed on this on this uh, list. The number one enemy of Israel. Go ahead. The Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites. Who are the Ishmaelites? Have you heard the name before? Ishmael, don't be considered the so-called Arabs today. Go ahead. Of Moab. Moab, the Moabites. There's information in history and sarcophagus on the Moabites being the so-called Chinese people today. Those are the first three nations listed, read. And the Hagarines. Hagarines are considered African nations, read. Gabal. Go ahead. And Ammon. Ammon, Japanese people, read. And Amalek. Amalek is so-called Jewish man. We can prove that as well. Go ahead. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. More so-called African nations, all listed on this list of enemies of the Israelites. So it says that they're going to cut off, cut us off from being a nation, hide our identity, things like that. When did it happen? How did it happen? It happened a while ago, way back in the day, before we even came to America. It happened. They already set up plans to go against the nation of Israel because they know we're the chosen people of God. That's what it says in the, in the, in the laws of God. The so-called black Hispanic Native Americans are the chosen people of God. You can tell that just by turning on your TV on a daily basis. Our people are the best at sports, we're the best musicians, we're the best dancers, we're the best cooks. What else? We can, we can run laps around everybody on certain topics. Right. We have we have the gift of God in us, but at the same time we're in a lower state because God put a curse on us because we disobeyed him centuries ago. Thousands of years ago. But we can get into that as well. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28. Go ahead. 68. Uh, give me uh, 15 first. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Are you familiar with Moses in the Bible? Everybody knows about Moses. That's like a prominent figure in the Bible. What did he do to, with the Israelites that you're familiar with? He split the Red Sea, led him out of Egypt, let my people go, that, that whole thing. That's what happened, it says that in the Bible. But this is after they came out of Egypt, they're in the wilderness, and he explained, hey, 
you gotta follow these commandments of God in order to be blessed and above all nations. But if you don't do it, he's gonna say he's gonna put curses on you. Spiritual curses, generational curses. Have you heard that term before? My mom used to bring it up all the time. We're in a generational curse. Fatherless homes, the black on black crime, things like that, brown on brown crime, selling drugs to each other, prostitution. All that stuff is in our community. Why? That's all we know per se, because we don't have a we don't have identity. We don't have anything to, uh, to grasp onto to show, hey, we were better than this. We used to be kings back in the day. That's what people say. We was kings. That's what they say. But where's the history on that? We can bring it out. It's in the Bible. King David, King Solomon, all the kings of Judah were, were our people. They were black men. That's, that's true according to the Bible. History and archaeology. But keep reading. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. What does that remind you of? We're cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Whatever city we're in, we're getting cursed. We're getting gunned down in the streets. We're on drugs. We're in jail. That's how it works. We're in the curses of God because we disobeyed him. That's all. It's not, it's not a coincidence. And in the field, what does that remind you of? We were in slavery in the field, right, for over 400 years. And quite as kept, the so-called Hispanics were in slavery as well. They were indigenous people of this land. And what happened? The conquistadors came. The pilgrims came. They slaughtered them. And the people that did escape that particular affliction, they shipped them on boats to Spain and, and all these things like that. That's where they went. So they couldn't keep people on the, on the same land that they knew that they could run and escape. So they brought foreign people from Africa, quote unquote, that built, built uh, the workers in the field and slaves over here. So that's where it ties into history, it ties into the Bible. Go ahead. Give me, um, I think it's 30, 32. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What does that remind you of? In slavery what? Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That reminds you what? On the auction box in slavery. They separated families, things like that. If you had a son and daughter with you, uh, you were a parent, you would watch them get sold to anybody else. Keep reading, it's gonna get elaborate. Read. And thy eye and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. You're gonna look at them like, man, I wanna see my son again, I wanna see my daughter again, my wife again, my mother again. But guess what? You have no power. It's gonna, it's gonna get real descriptive. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Yeah, you don't have the might to get them back because you're in slavery. You're oppressed. First and foremost, when we came over here, we weren't speaking English. What were we speaking? We're more likely speaking Hebrew for the most part. Right. Or a dialect of uh, West Africa at that point because we weren't in Israel at that time. But keep reading. Verse, uh... Start at, uh... Verse 41. Verse 41, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, uh -huh. but thou shalt not enjoy them. Yeah, we're going to have children. We're not going to be able to enjoy them because what? guess what? They're going to be working in the field with us. Have you seen the show Underground? Have you seen that on uh, Hulu? I watched that show recently, and I was like, man, this is how our, our ancestors went through. An eight-year-old, seven-year-old kid picking cotton with us, prickling his, uh, his hands, and getting threatened with whips if he ain't getting a certain amount of uh, pound in his bag each day. That's what that's what they do. We can't enjoy our kids because we gotta be afraid, mentally afraid, and in, in, uh, in a shell, a, a, a world of hurt. Thing like, man, our kids are gonna go through the same thing, affliction we're going through, and that's what it talks about in the Bible. Read. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. They're gonna what? They shall go into captivity. Our kids are gonna be slaves. Read. Uh, verse forty-three. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, uh -huh. and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger is anybody that's not an Israelite. Whoever's not a black, Hispanic, or Native American, they're considered strangers to God. Because they don't know God for real. We're the children of God, not everybody else. So they're going to get up above us very high. We're going to come down very low. That's, that's what happened in America. Strangers came to America, built up their own empire with free labor. And now guess what? 500 years later, they're still on top. We still got to go to them for loans, water, food. We don't have any companies. You, you, you might see celebrities with their own businesses, things like that. They didn't start off with that. They got to go through the white men and get it. Go ahead. Shall I go to 37? Uh, 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Exactly what it said. You want to buy something? Hey, who's in that store? The Arabs. Where the black stores at? They might have mom and pop stores, restaurants, things like that. But other, other than that, there's no franchise with black owned names on it. They try to say Popeyes is a place for black people. No, we don't own Popeyes. That's madness. And first of all, that food is a poison anyway. Keep reading. He shall be, be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. Exactly. We're going to become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. That's referencing it. Oh, yeah. Give me, um, give me, uh, Matthew. I think it's three. 
Yeah, Matthew 3 and 2. Just a simple, simple thing that Christ said. Give me that. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And say, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the overall message. Repent means turning from your wickedness, turning from sin. Everybody talks about sin, but what sin? Breaking the laws. If we're breaking the law, God's in captivity, put us in slavery until this time. The only way to get out of it is not sin, repent, and turn to the Most High and have faith in the Son who the world calls Christ. As an example, like I said, it's a perfect vessel and he walked perfectly in the law. We got to walk perfectly in the law, or at least try to in these last days before Judgment Day. Everybody talks about Judgment Day. And, and uh, just the last particular message America will be destroyed. Right. America is prophesied to be destroyed. Russia, China, uh, North Korea, all these countries got nuclear warheads ready to press a button on this place. So the only way out of it is to repent, and it's going to be a spiritual warfare, a spiritual warfare in your mind. You got to change the way you think to change your actions. So that's the message to you, brother. You be safe, man. You get a flyer, brother? Yeah, definitely. Look at us on YouTube. We out here every other weekend. You have calls, email us, anything like that. There's videos on, on YouTube, brother. Definitely. Shout on, brother. Be safe. Hey, man. Everybody's waking up to this truth slowly but surely, man. Whether you know him for a week or two. What's going on, sister? You have any questions? You just listen? You, you believe in the Bible? Okay. Well, we believe up here with the Israelites of the Bible. How long have you been staying here? You been listening to me this whole time? About the curses and things like that? Okay, perfect. I don't have to go back into that. But it's the same message for all the black and Native Americans. Our people are been in a downtrodden state. Our job is to teach our people to repent. Believe in who the world calls Christ, and you know, walk it out and have, have, a, have a mindset of righteousness and things like that. Because there's a coming judgment on earth. And you, you don't want to be caught up in that judgment, that second death, and also other afflictions that may come about, famine, pestilence, race wars, things like that. It's all going to happen, and it's already conjured up right now through this period. Because this whole uh, 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 George Floyd thing kind of kicked off a whole spiral as far as what's happened for for the last 50 years already. But this time it looks a little different because it's in the National Guard, sending different military uh, factions to the uh, inner cities and try to stop this whole uh, uh, outbreak as far as looting and things like that. But overall, they've been planning this for a while anyway. They want to oppress people. They want to put people in concentration camps. But the only way to uh, get around that is to believe in God and have faith that he's going to spare you. Give me that in, um, I think, the second Ezra. Nine and seven, and everyone that shall be saved. Everyone that shall be saved. This is a key point. Everyone wants to be saved, right? Everybody talks about being saved, but this is what is going to get real descriptive, right? It shall be able to escape by his works. It shall be escaped by your works. What are the works and actions you do? Go ahead. And by faith. And by what? Faith. Faith and works. Just like it said in James, right? Whereby ye have believed. Uh -huh shall be preserved from the said perils so if you have faith and works and do righteous works you're going to be preserved from said perils the destruction the uh, the affliction that's coming read and shall see my salvation in my land yeah, you're going to see the salvation that uh, god promised in abraham isaac and jacob through the israelites read and within my borders uh -huh. for i have sanctified them for me from the beginning yeah, he sanctified the elected one third from the beginning to be the people that's going to be righteous and stand up for this cause in the last days give me that in psalms 94 and 16. But yeah, that's what we're teaching. Our people got to know the truth first and foremost. Because the church, they, they teach whatever they want. It's all about money for the most part. Give me that in Titus. Titus 1 and 10. Real quick. Do you go to church this or at all? Or you just believe in God? Just, do you go to church? Okay, you used to? I'm sorry? That's true. Give me that in Acts first. Acts 7 and uh, 48. Read that. Titus 1 and 10 for they are for there are many are bully and vain talkers a vain talker a, a pointless talker read and deceivers uh -huh. especially they of their circumcision the deceivers of the circumcision the circumcision are people are that are Israelites that are Jews and you're a Jew to the spirit read whose mouths must be stopped whose what mouths must be stopped their mouths must be stopped why who subvert whole houses they subvert whole houses they sink houses with their words they have you believe in certain things that's a lie and it's going to end up ruining your salvation read teaching things which they are not to they what teaching things which they are not they teach them things they ought not people in the church teach things they ought not so a seed for ten dollars get a hundred dollars back like where's that in the bible that's madness 
he turned around, the, the, the pastor got a Benz, and he, he yeah. still he still struggling to pay your rent. Oh, you got a health issue. You can't even get a, a bill paid from the hospital bill because the pastor's busy lining his pockets, lining his wife's pockets, going on vacation. I see the pastor, uh, I forgot his name. Um, it was a black pastor, too, a prominent dude. I seen him in, uh, before we came to the troop, I seen him came to SAC. It was like his big old conference. Um, and then he basically got into a little uh, trouble because he ended up buying a $200,000 Lamborghini for his wife for her birthday. Like, wait a minute. What is that for? Like, why you need, why you need a Lamborghini? Why you need, where do you get $200,000 just to spend on that anyway? That's loose money. He's supposed to help out the people with that money. Give to the poor. Be, be a father to the father. Keep reading that, actually. Go ahead. For filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake. Lucre is another word for, for money, monetarily. Go ahead. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own. Black pastors teaching a black congregation or a Hispanic congregation. Lying to our own people for money. Because guess what? We go to the church. They don't have to set up their own church. What do you have to do to get a church? You got to go to theologian school. And guess who's, who's teaching you there? The enemy. So-called white race. The people that put you in slavery years ago. Or the same people teaching you their spiritual guidance. That's madness. That can't be true. Because this is our book. Our people wrote this book. Not the white man wrote this book. People might think that, but at the end of the day, when you go into the history of the Bible, even King James, people think King James is white. King James was a black man. He was the king of England. That's why they hated him so much. He was ruling over white people at the time. He reading? Said the Cretans are always liars. Cretans are always liars, read. Evil beasts, slow bellies. Uh -huh. the, this witness is true. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. You had to rebuke those people sharply that subvert houses and lie to our people. If I see a pastor walking by, hey, I'm going to challenge him on, his, on what he believes. At the end of the day, I'm pretty sure it's not going to line up with the Bible that we read. He might read the Bible, but he doesn't teach the right particular doctrine out of the Bible because he's not led by the Holy Spirit. He was taught by a theologian school that he paid money to to teach a certain thing to get to church. To get a tax write off for money. That's what they do. Get a 5-1-T-3 tax write off to get tax free money to lie to our people. And that's what it's about for the most part. Is that it? Keep reading that actually. That they may be sound in the faith, not, not giving heed to Jewish fables. And commandments of men. Commandments of men, read. That turn from the truth. That turn from the truth. That's what people do. They turn from the truth of the Bible by learning from different Christian pastors. Like you said, you used to go to church, but the church in you, that's true. Because the church is the nation of Israel. Keep re read that. Acts chapter 7, verse. You, you want me to read 38 for the church part? Yeah, that's the one. Well, Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Exactly, the church in the wilderness. Who's in the wilderness according to the Bible? I said that earlier. The Israelites were Moses. So the church is in the wilderness. So the people in the church are the Israelites. That's how you prove that. Keep reading. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Exactly, the lively oracles of God talking about the laws of God. Give me that in Hebrews uh, 5 and 12. You got something here? Get 48 now. Verse 48. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with ma made with hands. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. So, like you said, the church is within you. We believe that because we are the church. We're congregated right now, having church right. on the street corner of Grand and Willow. That's right. Yeah. In Del Paso, Weiss, quote unquote slums in Sacramento. It's not a problem. We can have church anywhere in your house, on a phone, or on a, a, a web webcam, wherever the case may be. As long as we're preaching the word of God in true sincerity and, and uh, believing in it, obviously walking it out. That's church right there. And we are church. We're the body of Christ. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me that. As saith the prophet, verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Yeah, how are you going to build a house to the heavenly father that created the earth? You can't put him in a building. There's a thousand different churches. Which one do you belong to? There's a Pentecostal church, a Christian church, a Catholic church, Baptist church, Seventh-day Adventist. Mormons, like, which one's right? None of that's in the Bible. Pentecost is in the Bible, but it's a holy day course it is. Other than that, like, people are uh, accustomed to doing uh, uh, commandments of men. Give me that in Colossians uh, 2 and 8. What you have? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Give, give me Colossians 2 and 8, and you read this. Hebrews 5 and 12. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, uh -huh. you have need 
that won't teach you again. Yeah, we have to be taught again. That's what it means to be uh, reborn, reborn in your mind. That, that how, that's how uh, when Nicodemus came to Christ, so how can you be reborn in your mama's womb again? It's not talking about nothing physical, it's talking about spiritual change. But I said that, brother, you got to change in your mind. Read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Yeah, that's the first principle of the oracles of God, which is laws, like I said. Keep going. And are become such as have need of milk. Yeah, milk, like a, like a newborn baby needs milk to survive. They can't chew anything, they have no teeth, they can't uh, control their, their uh, esophagus, things like that. They need milk because it's what they can take. And, and the spiritual walk, you gotta have a, a slow baby steps and learn the, the, the small things at the time, which is your heritage, knowing who you are, knowing who your enemy is, and knowing what you gotta do to please the most high, which is keep the laws of God, read. And not of strong meat. Not of strong meat, the deep breakdowns, the things that don't necessarily pertain to salvation, but at the same time, once you get more accustomed to the heritage and your walk, and you learn more, obviously you learn the laws, you get that down packed, change your work, you change your dietary eating habits, things like that. Then you go into more breakdowns in history, things like that. And that's what we have to do. But it all takes time. And you gotta have that faith and endurance to know that the most high put the spirit on you, hey, this might be the time for me to wake up and change my ways. Everybody talks about, like I said, the, the, the Armageddon, things like that. But we don't know when it's gonna happen, but at the same time, this is the time of grace period. Great, the grace period is when, hey, you got to get right before the judgment. The grace is before the judgment. That's when you need to stop sinning, right now. Give me, um, oh, give me that, give me Sirach, I think it's 19, 19 and 19, give me that. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Uh -huh. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Hey, don't be spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. Christ ain't gonna cheat your life. People think, what, Christ's birthday is December 25th. Can you find that in the Bible for me? Please. Who told you to put a Christmas tree in your, in your house? Where's that in the Bible? Bring it out. Where is that how you celebrate Jesus? Can you find me that? Show me that in the Bible anywhere. Please. I'll show you exactly what the Bible says against Christmas, actually. Give me that. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. People that made up their own uh, doctrine for money's sake. Hey, we're going to have Easter. We're going to have Christmas. We're going to have all these different pagan holidays. That's what people are accustomed to. But who made that up? Those are ancient Babylonian customs. Heathen customs that Israelites didn't follow. Give me that. Uh, what you got? Sirach? Uh, uh, yeah, give me, start at 18. And you give me, um, yeah, I was thinking of something. Give me uh, Jeremiah 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. Sirach 19 and 19. 18. 18. The fear of the Most High is the first step to be accepted of him. Yeah, you gotta fear the Most High to be accepted by him. Read. In wisdom, obtain it is love. Yeah, and having wisdom, you obtain the most high love. Because what? The wisdom that he's talking about is the laws of God. If you love God, keep his commandments. That's what it says in the first John. You get that? The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. is the doctrine of life. Exactly. That's the doctrine of life. The commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Because what? When the Israelites came out of Egypt, it also says you have a choice between life and death, evil and good. Choose life. And choosing life is keeping the commandments. That's pretty simple. One plus one equals two. That's plain in the Bible. Read. And they that do things that please them shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Everlasting life. You do things that please God, which is keeping the commandments, which is the doctrine of life. That's how you have a tree of immortality. When the coming kingdom comes, people that are having the faith and work like we described before, those are the people that are going to get the kingdom. The people that don't get the kingdom, they're going to have to go through that destruction. That's second effort. When America gets burnt, burnt to a crisp. When the war comes, when the race wars come, all that's going to happen to America. America hasn't known that type of destruction. But America is the chief place of wickedness. That's where everybody else gets their philosophy from. You believe that? And that's what I'm talking about the, uh, the pagan holidays. When everybody comes to America, if, whether you're Chinese, Arab, uh, uh, anything like that, you come to America and accept their philosophy. So that's what people do as far as their customs. Starting with the holidays. Read. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen, which are other nations. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh -huh. for, the heathen, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain. Like I said, vain is like nothing is worthless. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Read that again. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. I want you to describe this to me, sis. I'm not even going to break it down. I just want you to describe what it's explaining. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, uh -huh. the works of the hands of the workmen with the with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Read. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. What does that sound like? 
one cuts a tree out of the forest, fastens it to the ground, and decks it with silver and gold. What does that sound like to you? No, no, no. You cut a tree out of the forest, you deck the tree with silver and gold, and you fasten it to the ground. What does that sound like? It sounds like a Christmas tree. You, that's what people do. You get a Christmas tree, you choose it out. It's, it might already be cut, you have a little field or a fence around it. Sometimes already cut, so people go to the wilderness and cut it themselves. But that's what it's talking about. This is in the Bible. This is back in what? 580 BC? This is Prophet Jeremiah describing Christmas thousands of years before we celebrate here in America. Why is that? Because people were doing it back then. That's right. Nothing new under the sun. Give me that. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Exactly. The tree is upright because it's on the stand, but it doesn't speak because it's an idol. Read. They must needs be born uh -huh. because they cannot go. Read. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Exactly. This Christmas tree can't do evil, but it's evil because it's a symbol of them as a, pa a pagan deity. Read. Neither also is it in them to do good. Exactly. That pagan, that pagan ritual is only going to afflict you uh, in spiritual fornication. But at the same time, having it, looking at it, is not necessarily an issue, but having it in your house and celebrating it, worshiping it, things like that. Because it's actually a, a, what's it, what is it? Um, yeah, a phallus symbol, which is another name for a penis. A Babylonian uh, 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 person, what? I forgot his name, Nimrod. That's what it was. It was a celebration of Nimrod, because he, he basically, it was basically to, to uh, please him. It was, a, it was a Christmas tree that was supposed to represent his penis. And it, it was like an erect penis, like I said. He put gifts under it to keep him happy. That's what it comes from. Impregnated his mother, Semiramis, uh, he dies and he's reborn as Tammuz. Tammuz's his son, exactly. So it's all pagan ritual. And that's what people are used to because they come to America, they don't know anything about their own history except what's given to them, see them on TV. And it's all, for the most part, a money grab because every holiday they stock the shelves and Target, Walmart, whatever the case may be, Valentine's Day, that's pagan, Easter, that's pagan, Christmas, that's pagan, Thanksgiving, that's pagan, October, that's definitely pagan. All those holidays are meant for, to, to obviously uh, keep us in spiritual fornication and sin against the Most High. Because you, if you claim to be an Israelite, if you know you're an Israelite, as we do, we're not going to participate in none of those actions, none of those uh, uh, holidays. Because God already has no holidays. Passover, Feast of First Fruits, Feast of Eleven Bread, Pentecost, like I said, uh, uh, Day of Atonement, things like that. Those are all biblical uh, 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 holy days that the Most High gave to the children of Israel, who we are, who you are, sister. Welcome, sister. You have to keep that fire. If you have YouTube or on YouTube, you don't have time to come out, research the information, and repent. 